One of the things I like about SAP Enable Now is the degree of control it gives you over just about everything. One of these things is the positioning of bubbles in a simulation. This may seem a bit fiddly at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's incredibly powerful, especially if you're coming from something like Oracle UPK, which has extremely limited functionality in this area. So in this short video, we'll look at a few things you can do with bubbles. Before we start, let's take a look at a sample bubble and identify its components. First, note that you actually have two bubbles, one for demo mode and one for practice mode. These are maintained independently, so always make sure you're displaying the one you're changing. This is a typical bubble. The style of the bubble is controlled by the style property. There's quite a few styles available, and SAP seem to add a few more with each release. Which one you use is entirely up to you, just try to be consistent. Bubbles can have a pointer. By default, bubbles for interaction macros, that's input text and mouse actions, will have a pointer, which points to the screen object, and explanation bubbles won't have a pointer. But this is just a starting point. You can show or hide the bubble easily enough, regardless of the macro type. Now, there's a blue square at the tip of the pointer. This is the anchor point, and it's important for a few reasons that we'll get into in a minute. In this example, we're looking at a bubble for an interaction macro, so it has a visible pointer, and this pointer points to the related screen object. The anchor point is effectively aligned to the edge of this object. The object has a magenta dotted line around it, and the bubble has a red border around it. First off, if you want to change the size of the bubble, you can drag the handles on the bubble border. Note that there's only handles on two of the sides and the corner between them. These are the sides opposite the pointer, because these are the sides you can change without moving the pointer or the anchor point. This is because you really don't want to move the anchor point as it's tied to the object. So what you're really doing here is changing the bubble's height to width ratio. Note that Enable Now will always make sure the bubble's large enough to accommodate all of the text. You can make it bigger than that if you want to, but you can never make it smaller than it needs to be. Now, if you want to move the entire bubble to somewhere completely different on the screen, you can. Just click on it and drag it to the new location. However, you probably don't want to do this for bubbles for an interaction macro, as you normally want it pointing to the action object. The exceptions to this are explanation bubbles, which aren't tied to an object, and bubbles for keyboard actions, because they obviously don't even have an associated screen object. Okay, so say you do want to move the bubble to still point to the same object, but from a different side. Unfortunately, if you're coming from a UPK world, this doesn't seem to be as easy as you'd expect, because there's no snap and glue here. But what it lacks in this simplicity, Enable now makes up for in terms of flexibility. So there are two properties that come into play here, the orientation property and the position property. Now, it's important to understand here that these both work in relation to the bubble anchor point, that little blue square at the tip of the bubble pointer. The orientation defines the position of the bubble relative to this anchor point, and the position defines the position of the anchor point relative to the screen object. It's a bit easier to understand by way of an example, so let's say we want the bubble shown here to be above the order field and pointing down. At the moment, if you look at the orientation property, you'll see that it's set to southeast. This means that the bubble should be southeast of the anchor point. So let's change this to north because we want the bubble to be north of the input field. But look at what happens when we do this. The bubble's now overlapping the input field instead of being above it, which isn't exactly what we were going for. This is because, as just noted, the orientation defines the bubble's position relative to the anchor point. And if you look at the anchor point here, you can see that the bubble's due north of it. So it's working as designed, if not as we intended. So what we have to do now is move the anchor point. And that's where the position property comes into play, or actually properties, as there's six different properties in here. Let's take a look. If we click on the edit button for the position property, we'll see an interesting set of fields. First, let's look at the two option buttons on the top left. These are an either or choice and define what the anchor point is positioned relative to. The first choice is document, which means that the position of the anchor point is defined relative to the screenshot. We'll come back to this in a minute, but for now, let's look at the second option, Element. This indicates that the anchor point is specified relative to the screen object, in this case, the input field that we're entering our text into. For interaction macros, this should always be Element, because we want our bubble to be tied to the screen object. Now let's look at the other fields provided for this. Immediately to the right of the Element option are two fields. These define the percentage of the weight along the element, on the x-axis and the y-axis respectively, at which the anchor point should be located. 
In case your geometry is a little rusty, this starts from the top left corner of the object and the x-axis extends horizontally to the right and the y-axis extends vertically down. So values of 100 and 100 here mean 100% of the way along the x-axis and 100% of the way down the y-axis, which will be the lower right corner of the object. By contrast, the values of 0 and 0 would be the upper left corner, and 50 and 50 would be slap bang in the middle of the element. Now the next pair of fields are the offset fields. These are used to shift the bubble anchor point by the specified number of pixels from the point at which it's placed based on the element fields. In this example, the x-axis has a value of minus 6, which means to move the anchor point 6 pixels to the left. A negative value always moves the point to the left, and a positive value will move it to the right. And then we have a y-offset of 4, which moves the anchor point 4 pixels down. With a y-axis, a negative value moves the point up, and the positive value moves it down. So why these specific offset values? Well, you'll often see enable now default to a value of 4 or minus 4 for the offset. This is because the highlight, the blue border that's drawn around the object in demo mode, and optionally in practice mode, is by default 4 pixels wide. So a setting of 4, or minus 4 here, will make sure the bubble pointer is clear of this highlight. Now, minus 6, or plus 6, is used to shift the anchor point in slightly to cater for cases where you have two screen objects directly adjacent to each other to be absolutely clear which one we're pointing to. So, to move our bubble to be above the input field and pointing to the middle of it, we'll change the x-axis to be 50% with a 0 offset, and the y-axis to be 0% with an offset of minus 4. And now we have what we wanted. Now, you may think all of this is just too much effort, but it's not really. Most of the time you'll be using percentages of 0, 50 or 100, and offsets of 0, plus 4 or minus 4. And once you've been doing this a while, it becomes almost second nature and very quick to do. Now, remember I said there are two bubbles that you need to maintain independently, for demo mode and practice mode. So once you have your demo mode bubble positioned correctly, you need to do the same thing for the practice mode bubble, or the other way around. Fortunately, Enable Now makes this nice and easy for us by providing a couple of buttons that let us copy the position from one bubble and paste it onto the other bubble. You can even do this for bubbles in different steps if you need to. All of this is to make sure that you keep the bubble tied to the object, or, more accurately, to keep the bubble anchor point tied to the object. Why is this so important? In short, it's just in case the object moves on the actual application screen. This isn't necessarily a problem in the simulation, as the screenshot's a static image and the object will always be in the same place on that image. But if you're going to convert this simulation into a desktop assistant guided tour, then the screenshot isn't used and the bubble's overlaid on the user's actual application screen. If they're running at a different screen resolution, or maybe using a device with a different orientation or screen ratio, like a tablet, the position of the object on their screen may be in a different place to where it was on the screen when you recorded your simulation. If the bubble's positioned relative to the object, this won't matter, as the desktop assistant will always find the object regardless of where it is on the screen, and point the bubble directly at it. Even if you won't use the desktop assistant, there's a very good reason for making sure the bubble's always tied to the object. Enable Now provides a very good re-record feature. If the interface changes, Enable Now can pretty much go through and replace all of the screens in a simulation automatically. If the position of the object shifts with that interface change, then as long as the bubble's tied to the object, then the bubble will be moved along with it. If the bubble's not tied to the object, then it could end up pointing to entirely the wrong thing. Okay, so let's finish up with a look at explanation bubbles. Here you can see that an explanation bubble doesn't have a pointer, at least not by default. But you can see that it still has a bubble anchor point, that blue square. But it's in the middle of the bubble, which means that the point is effectively hidden. Looking at the properties, we can see that the orientation is set to center, which supports this. You can also see that the position is set to 50% and 50% with zero offset relative to the document, which positions the bubble directly in the middle of the screen. So, let's make some changes to this bubble. First, note that the bubble's tall and thin. By default, Enable now seems to do this. I prefer my bubbles to be in the same proportions as the screen itself, so we'll change this. You can see that here we have handles on all sides of the bounding box and all of the corners, so we can drag any of these, and the bubble will be symmetrically resized around the bubble anchor point. Now, let's say we actually do want a pointer on this. Maybe we want to point to the section of the screen the bubble text is referring to. 
We could use the orientation field to do this, but this time we'll use the WYSIWYG editor because it's easier and because it will give us the opportunity to see a few other things. So we'll click on the anchor point and drag this to outside the bubble. As you drag it around the object, you'll see it will snap to some default positions. If you look closely, you can see all the available positions faintly in the background and an indicator is shown in the middle of the bubble stating what position this is. A couple of things to note here. First, the orientation indicator in the bubble refers to the orientation of the pointer relative to the bubble, whereas the orientation property defines the position of the bubble relative to the anchor point. So these two values won't match. In fact, they're usually diametrically opposite. So if I drag the pointer to the left of the bubble, the indicator in the bubble shows a W for west, but the orientation property shows east. That's just something to be aware of if you're manually dragging the bubble anchor point around. Secondly, for several of these pointer positions, the orientation property shows a center, which is clearly wrong. This may be because not all bubbles support all of these positions, so positions that aren't universally supported across all bubble styles don't get an orientation value. For example, this is the White Islands bubble style, which does support all of the 15 possible positions, or 16 if you count center. But if we switch to small, this style doesn't support them all, it only has 8 supported positions. So, going back to the White Island bubble style, if I select WS for west-south, which incidentally isn't even a valid compass point, the orientation property shows a center. And if I then switch to a bubble style of small, which doesn't support WS, the bubble automatically changes to something that small does support, in this case just west. Although, confusingly, the orientation property still shows a center, until you set the bubble orientation within this style. It's all a bit inconsistent, so watch out for this when you're playing with your bubbles. Oh, one last thing before we wrap it up. You can see there's an icon in the explanation bubble. That's controlled by the icon property, and there's four different ones you can choose from. And not the same ones that you can see in Desktop Assistant, or the ones that you can see in Web Assistant. Just a little bit more inconsistency there. Or if you don't want an icon at all, you can choose no icon. Unfortunately, unlike some products, you can't add an icon to regular interaction bubbles, they're only available for explanation bubbles. Actually, you could by just inserting an image into the bubble, which is more flexibility that Enable now gives you, but you probably also need to use a borderless table to force the alignment, and then it starts to be too much like hard work. So, we'll leave it there. In summary, there's a lot you can do to control the appearance and position of bubbles in Enable now. But do try to retain that tie between the bubble anchor point and the object by specifying the position as relative to the element. And always try to be consistent in your bubble styles, both within a simulation and also across simulations. That's it for now. Thanks for your time.